Seeker by a mad painter, a.k.a. T.R. Becker. Her name was Seeker Six. She was one of twelve that was to be sent out in search of knowledge so long ago that it took her a full two seconds to bring up the memories. Before she had become a ship, she had had a great life. Four children, two husbands, a couple of lovers over the years had given her a full life, but it was her career in computer programming that gave her purpose. It was this purpose that had brought her to become what she was now. She had been the lead programmer on the first three Seeker ships with the promise that she would be allowed to become one of the twelve. The first two were not fully autonomous, having to have crews, and were put into service as colony transports. By the fifth, all the bugs were worked out. This had taken her a little over a hundred years, but it was a short time to ensure that when she t became six, she would have little problems taking control over it. Six was the largest at the time, nearly 10 miles long and 1.5 miles wide. One full mile was taken up with the faster and light drive. It may have been fast, but it was not without its limits. The jumps were limited to 100,000 miles at a time. Any more it would heat up and implode. It was just short of her 200th birthday when they moved her brain into the cradle on the control deck of six. Of course, they had put her to sleep to do this. They had taken them two full days to make all the connections and another to check them. When she finally awoke, it was as if she stepped into a new world. She had no regrets for the life she left behind, but between the stars she would often think about it. Her mission was to roughly stay the same distance from the galactic center and search out the knowledge of any kind but mostly that of life. She would always move in the galaxy's anti-spin direction to shorten the flight time. This th doesn't seem like much, but after millennia, it would add up to light years. It took her almost a year to be able to fully control the ship. After a dozen trips to the nearest colony, she became proficient. It took over 200 ship hours to reach the first system that her race had never been to before. There were only four planets, two rocky, two gas giants. She spent a year studying the system, using all of her equipment she had. She had a, made a few mistakes and had even lost a drone, but true to her nature, she learned from her mistakes. There, were, there was little knowledge, new knowledge, but there was much to give proof to many theories her race had. She would compile any new information and send it back to her home world every 10 days using sub subspace communications. First 10,000 years she had received updates back and then they just stopped. She had no clue why, but this did not stop her from sending hers. She spent many hours in wonder as to why and there really was only one reason why and that was her race no longer exists. This made her feel sad, but it would not stop her from following her program. She cont contained all the knowledge of her race within her until the time she had left. Her race would not be forgotten as long as she or one of the other Seekers was still out there. She had no way of telling if the others were still on mission, or even if the other four had ever been sent out. Maybe sometime she would see about contacting one of them in some way. She had learned a lot in the first thousand systems that she had visited, but had found no life of any kind. She had found all, all the ingredients, but never mixed the proper way. She had studied many strange worlds. There was one that when it was closest to a star, it was molten rock, and then solid rock when it was furthest in its orbit. She had found what she had thought was what was left of a gas giant after its sun had expanded, blowing the gas away to reveal a diamond 7,000 miles in diameter. She had sent drones to get samples from most of these worlds. It was on the 4,010th world that she first found life. It was only microbial, but it was the first signs of life other than on the home world they had found. She spent two full years learning all she could about it. 
That first world with life was so long ago for her now. She, had, she now had samples from over a hundred worlds of all kinds of life. Most of the life was microbial or plant, but there were a few that had fish and lower forms of animal life. In all the millennia, she had never found any signs of an upper form of life. She had come to the conclusion that the home world, that her home world was the only one to have produced intelligent life so far. This made the part of her corporeal mind sad, and she was experiencing depression, something she had not experienced since becoming six. Her programming was all that was keeping her going after so many millennia. Her corporeal part had all but given up after the second eon. None had really known how long a brain would last merged with a seeker. Two million years was a long time for any form of life to live. She decided to try to contact other seekers before she lost herself to her programming completely. It was a simple message sent out on all communications bands that she could think of. It was set to transmit each time the ship stopped between light jumps to cool the drive. Once done, she went into deep sleep for what she thought would be the last time. It was a small world that was mostly water, not really all that different than a few million others in the galaxy. But what did make it different was on this world there was an upper form of life, or one that was trying to become one. It was the month of July and the night sky was clear as Nikolai sat at his desk working at his radio receiver. He was working on trying to give his race an unlimited supply of free energy. It had been his life's work. He almost missed hearing the signal, being lost in his thoughts. He jumped to his feet when he noticed that it was rhythmic. In the days that followed, he told a couple of close friends, and before long the story was out. On August 26, 1888, he had to make a statement. It says followed. The changes I noted were taking place periodically, and with such a clear suggestion of numbers and orders that were not traceable to any cause that then known to me. The feeling is consistently growing on me that I have been the first to hear the greetings from one planet to another. From then on, the world's government painted him as touched in some way. One of the world's greatest minds were reduced to a penniless recluse and died in historical obscurity from telling the truth.